Hey there, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. It's time to have a look and see what's going on when it comes to your monthly astrological forecast for April 2024. Just a quick reminder, you might want to come back on a weekly basis, hit that subscribe button because I do weekly forecasts as well, highlighting the big astrology moments of the week that I don't cover in my monthlies here. And if you happen to be watching this before the end of March 2024, might want to head on over to my website and schedule yourself a session because I've got a special Equinox sale going on right now, 20% off one hour readings with me. So if you're down for that, head on over to my website again and schedule yourself an appointment. So what's going on when it comes to your April? April is all about new blank canvases for everybody, fresh starts and new beginnings across the board. And for you, this is primarily taking place around matters of your own expansion, prominence, growth, fame, as well as even big moves, big travel opportunities, getting you out into the world and promoting yourself in all kinds of ways. And that is because we have such a big focus on getting out of old lanes, getting out of old agreements, old commitments, old contracts, and old containers. We've got Venus, the Sun, Mercury retrograde, and a new moon solar eclipse all in your ninth house of expansion, prominence, big moves, big travel, higher education, government and legal matters, and even your spiritual path and practice dominating the first three quarters of the month. So let's talk about our solar eclipse new moon and the tone that it is setting because it's actually governing a lot more than just April. This new moon, of course, as all new moons are, is all about new beginnings, new commitments, and of course, new paths to go down. Now, when we have a new moon solar eclipse, it is likely there's going to be a development sometime between the 8th of April and the 8th of July, where a lot of you are going to be abandoning something that you have been working on now or that you've been living now or existing in now in favor of a big break in your life. A solar eclipse in the ninth house can indicate a wish coming true, especially if it does involve something like travel or a big move, something that you are doing to maybe further yourself when it comes to your business or your career or your education. And this can also indicate the crystallization of something very important on a government or legal side of things, whether this is licensure, immigration, marriage, it doesn't matter. But a lot of these wheels start to really get turning when we have a solar eclipse in the, you know, in the ninth house. And that's what this new moon on the eighth is opening up for you as a story for the next three months. We also have, of course, Mercury retrograde here. And so we want to make sure we also hold our horses when it comes to how fast we want to pursue these things. Because Mercury retrograde in the ninth house does bring a lot of the textbook stereotype Mercury retrograde experiences, you know, um, mix ups, slip ups, sudden plan changes, though sometimes these are not inconvenient things. These could actually be happy accidents or happy chances. So we want to make sure that we stay vigilant. If you do have any travel plans you're trying to make or you are looking to sign any contracts between the 1st and the 25th of this month, make sure you are 100% clear on what is going on. Dot your I's and cross, cross your T's and follow up with people. It's just common sense and doing your due diligence. Take nothing for granted and you'll be okay. Mercury retrograde is also going to offer you the opportunity to do a lot of reversal work, a lot of undo work and retrieval work. Is there anything that you'd like to reverse that has maybe been put on the table or has been kind of running your life, governing an aspect of your life in some way? Mercury retrograde here is great for undoing or reversing it, and you may get a chance to either appeal it or slip out of it or unmake it, renegotiate it however you want it to go. We also have the Sun and Venus here, bringing a lot of favor to you and your causes and your pursuits at this time. The Sun in the ninth house brings in a lot of attention, enhancement, support, and backup where you need it. 
and with Venus in the ninth house from the 5th to the 29th, you're also getting a chance to draw a lot of awareness and support in, the t in, in crowds, in droves. This is one of the 15 minutes of fame transits. You and Aries are really going through it uh, this month. And so you may find yourself on the rise in terms of your social prominence as well. Venus also takes your love life to more exotic places during this period, and you may find that you and a partner are becoming a little bit more experimental, or you may be deciding that you want to get out of your comfort zones together. This is also a time where you single Leos may be connecting with people from different backgrounds than you that you still have a really good chemistry with, or you may get a chance to connect with somebody that is a type of person that you have strong chemistry with, but not a type that you've met yet. Remember, we don't always meet all of our types. We have three, sometimes five different types baked into our astrology charts. We also have Mars in Pisces all month long. This is your eighth house of shared resources, passive income, self-employment earnings, intimacy, and anything that you share with partners, business partners, or romantic partners. And Mars in the eighth house is all about getting all armor off, getting all barriers down when it comes to intimacy and closeness and sensuality and sexuality. And so a lot of you Leo people are really going to be enjoying uh, just, you know, kind of becoming a bit more animal, a bit more carnal over the course of this month, but also getting closer to partners because barriers to intimacy on a non-physical level are also getting severely challenged. This is also a great time for getting a chance to challenge or eliminate any kind of financial blocks or professional blocks that have been thrown up in your way. Mars is going to be showing you how and helping you to do that. However, with Mars in the eighth house, you just want to be extra careful when it comes to things like shared resources or any kind of debts or, or whatever, because you're going to find that you have a lot more power when it comes to leveraging and borrowing and, and, and you know negotiating all kinds of things. Don't let your eyes get bigger than your stomach. We have Venus and the Sun entering Taurus at the back end of the month, the Sun on the 19th and Venus on the 29th. And this is your 10th house of career, upward mobility, status, station, promotions, and raises. And with the sun in the 10th house, you are going to find that your work life is going through a lot of important atmospheric, environmental, and even trend changes, sensibility changes that are going to make it a lot easier for you to rise through the ranks among your peers, among your clients and colleagues, and get you closer also to higher positions of influence yourself. And Venus here is going to turn you into a money magnet as we close up April and go on into May. Finally, we've got a full moon in Scorpio taking place on the 23rd which is your fourth house of home, family, your living situation, home economy, and all of that. And when we have a full moon, right, it's all about culminations, transitions, and endings. And this could be a great period for those of you that are looking to make some kind of big alteration to your living situation, whether you're looking to rearrange or renovate, or maybe some of you are house hunting, you're looking for a move. This two-week window period following the 23rd is going to be great for that. And this is also a time where a major transition is going to be freeing up you and your family from some kind of block or challenge that has followed it into the present. However, with the full moon in the fourth house, this can also be a time where certain family dramas may also get kicked up. And so we want to make sure that we keep our head on straight for it, because remember, not everyone really takes responsibility for how they behave with intense astrological energies, um, especially if you have a relative who likes to use it as an excuse for poor behavior. So that is what I have got for your April Leo. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.